In this video, we're gonna find out how each Xenotype works. Hi, my name is Sikli Shogun, and this video will explain Xenotypes. Mix in with my thoughts. Sit back and enjoy. Dirt Moles, the humanoid mole rats of the rim. Their eyes and skin are gray and thrive at the mountainous terrain. In combat, they have dark vision, strong melee damage, and fast wood healing, which is an ideal melee fighter. Sadly, they can't shoot well in the dark despite having dark vision since they have the nearsighted gene. Plus, you can't just place them outside under the sun with a low mood since intense ultraviolet sensitivity gives a negative 12 mood debuff. Also, dirt moles are slow runners. So in case you want a dirt mole to be active in combat, you should put them in the defensive side of the map such as tunnels and funnels. A dirt mole's life in a colony is quite manageable. Their food consumption is less than a baseliner, and only UV sensitivity hinders them from being able to go outside because of the mood debuff, which encourages the usage of dark vision, prompting the dirt mole to live and work under dark places, mountains, or in the night. A dirt mole is also great at mining. With dark vision, they don't need to utilize the lights in the tunnels. Otherwise, when it comes to field work, only UV sensitivity hinders the dirt mole. Such example is that taming animals in the daytime, and you can only utilize the dirt mole at night. Genies, an intellectual xenotype, and more on a manufacturing side. They look like a baseliner, but is less flexible than one. They are thin, hairless, and even beards are not allowed, so no Walter White shenanigans. In combat, genies are simply useless, with extra pain and delicate. Therefore, the possible ways to fight in a combat scenario as a genie are more tires, building sentries, and if desperate, ranged combat. Simply saying that genies are more suited in supporting the combatants by making high quality guns and armor. Regarding its life in the colony, a genie does not start a fight or have an aggressive mental break like murderous rage and sadistic rage and they consume less than a baseliner. If there are any types of aggressive bonds, you should either isolate the genie or isolate the aggressive xenotype because a beaten up genie cannot contribute much to the colony. A genie's set of skills usually excels at intelligence and crafting with the help of elongated fingers that boost their manipulation. But they have an awful social and poor animals and plants. It does not translate that they are useless in these areas. Huzas, with its gleaming bloodshot eyes from average to hulking body mass and combat mastery, the Hussar is a fearsome foe and a reliable ally. In combat, a Hussar is unstoppable which is unable to be slowed when hit. When they do get hit, however, they don't feel pain that much and recover quite fast with their super fast wound healing. Plus, a Hussar naturally has a great shooting and melee skill set, which is efficient and flexible, which can fill any combat role you need. Partial anti-toxic lungs help them live in polluted terrains and makes combat and polluted tiles more manageable. But its gorgeous dependency makes the Hossa frustrating to play as starting colonist since you have to basically rush for the gorgeous tech and they do get into a coma after 30 days of not consuming gorgeous. So you basically have to rush for the tech. A Hossa is also hyper aggressive and will likely start a social fight so it's better if they are restricted to an area with less colonists. Now at work, Aosa is awful at plants, animals, social, and artistic. Not useless, but still a pain to build for passionless ones. Neanderthals, literally cavemen. Neanderthals, with their stereotype, are strong in melee, plus they take more damage due to being robust. And also, they got reduced pain. Sadly, you had to train them how to shoot properly 
but not the ideal substitute for Hussas. I will explain the reasons later. Generally, a Neanderthal has a strong immunity and is both heat and cold tolerant, making them the most flexible and hardy xenotype. Now, here are the problems. First of all, they are aggressive and being slowpokes and slow learners, making them one, if not the worst xenotypes out there. It doesn't help that they have poor social and intellectual skills, but generally fun to roleplay as Neanderthals. But still, on a normal gameplay and you got them as a pawn, they are quite hard to manage. Pigskins I actually thought this one xenotype is one of the worst, but unironically one, if not the best general xenotype out there. Now pigskins in combat live up to their expectations, with reduced pain, they are quite tanky and can still stand in combat where others will have fallen or died. There is a slight problem though. They have trotter hands, making their manipulation a bit weak. Plus, they're nearsighted and the ideal range of weapons they can carry are pistols, shotguns, and SMGs. A pigskin or pigskins in your colony is definitely a boon. Especially early game where you don't have the time to cook or you have a horrible cook. With robust digestion and strong stomach, you can feed your pigskin with raw food. There is a slight problem. They do start eating the raw food first then the prepared meal. I don't know if the robust digestion trait affects the pawn's way of choosing food. Aside from strong stomach and robust digestion, they have strong immunities making them a step higher than Neanderthals. With the pigskin at work though, Trotter Hands is just a minor debuff, but they do start with poor cooking. Still, a pigskin is still quite manageable. Impins. In the forums, I have heard great things about them. Sure, in combat, they are fire spew and are resistant to fire. Plus, they are very fast runners that can reposition well in combat. That doesn't mean that they can be used as melee fighters. They can be used though as close range combat because the fire spear has 7 tiles of range. So that makes medium to close range weapons ideal, right? Maybe because the next genes may deter you from using them that way. Especially when they have other jobs in the colony. Slow wound healing is one, if not in my opinion, one of the worst traits when it comes to combat since the slower the rate of healing, the longer the downtime of a pawn. Also you can't play them efficiently in melee too, since they have weak melee damage. Overall they excel well at range especially in hit and run combat, and if you're forced to play close quarters, just run cover to cover. An impid ideally must live in hot climates, such as the desert, but not tropical forests since they have weak immunities. They are also pessimists, and if you're planning to put them on colder climates, be ready to leave their geysers, since they cannot tolerate the cold. At work, impids generally suck at planting and animals, which is weird for desert dwellers to not know how to manage animals might be because they rely on raiding, but that doesn't mean that they are not able to learn those skills. And if you got passion in these poor skills, hey, at least it isn't a Neanderthal. Wasters They thrive in pollution-stricken areas or soon-to-be ones. In combat, when a waster is in polluted areas, and their enemies are too, they're gonna win the battle of attrition with their total anti-toxic lungs plus pollution stimulus buffs of both extra movement speed and plus 5% consciousness. A waster's life is dependent on psych hype. Also, they are immune to wake up addiction plus super immunity, where they easily recover from sickness. Sadly, a waster is aggressive and ugly, which makes other types of colonies dislike them, and its psych hype dependency may prompt you from rushing psychoid-based drugs. A waster is great at work, only if they are in polluted areas. With pollution stimulus, they work a little bit faster than anyone else. The downside is their skills are poor in art and cooking, and awful in animals. Also, if you don't have pollution on your map, you are not utilizing the waster's unique traits. 
Itakins, Space Wolves, need I say more? An Itakin in combat can utilize two animal war poles, a skill which you can use on any animals to aid you in combat, but they can't be directly controlled, and it's better if they are nearby in the vicinity of the raiders. Also robust makes them fight longer. Due to damage mitigation and strong melee damage makes them deadly in close range combat. There's a bit of a problem though. Anitakin slowly heals over time. Also, naked speed is not actually a great trait. One of the reasons are Itakins are slow to heal. Sure, a naked Itakin can move faster, but the more damage you take, the more the downtime of a pawn, especially when they are also assigned as workers. Therefore, your production may be halted. So an Itakin must wear armor, even though it makes them slower because of the naked speed trait. In a colony, an Itakin is usually aggressive and also tire easily, so they frequently go to sleep. Also, they consume a lot of food than most xenotypes, on par with the pig skin. And also, they are psychically dull, which can be great if you are not a psychaster, or bad if you are. Overall, keep them closer to utilities and workspace. When it comes to naked speed, however, is great at work. Being fast while naked translates to a great hauler and an efficient workshop crafter. At the same time, it also complements their great animal skill. The only work that the Nitakin is awful at is mining. Hi mates! Not literally a smoke leaf or a drug enjoyer, Hi mates are more of a designer mate. Back in the Sino Humans mod, they are pretty and make their soon to be lovers go crazy for them, romantically of course. But they do not do combat with their violence disallowed gene trait. Plus they're delicate, just like the genies. A high mate is harmonious with kind thoughts gene. Even though other people are creepy or ugly, a high mate has no thoughts on how weird or hideous they look or sound. Plus they are beautiful and sanguine. They are also psychic sensitive and can romance easily than any other xenotype. If they do find lovers, they are also buffed with a psychic bonding trait which gives plus 15 consciousness boost for both the high mate and its lover and high mates have a high libido. The problem with high mates though, they are weak to heat and also vulnerable to psychic drone events that are negative. When it comes to work, a high mate has great social skills which makes them great sheriffs but awful in mining and plants. That doesn't mean that they are useless if they got passions in those skills. 